Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, I have been heavily involved in its management, both from a healthcare system perspective and a scientific one. One of the members of the Women's Brain Project, a nonprofit which I co-founded, went already in February in China, and uh, she acted as a source of scientific information for the scientists working at the Women's Brain Project. Once the first data became available from the Chinese population, it appeared that more men were infected with the virus, suffering from major consequences and dying of it. This was, for us, a, an extremely important observation, because what we do, we study the impact that sex, meaning our DNA, and gender, meaning our social construct that we all carry, have on diseases, with a special focus on brain and mental diseases. Later on, more data became available worldwide, and it was confirmed that, in fact, more men were having severe symptoms of the coronavirus infection as compared to women and dying even of it, although women were representing the majority of the working force in the healthcare system at the front line. And scientific hypotheses are based on the fact that the immune system of women might be stronger in fighting the virus. Now, is this true just for the coronavirus or not? Well, actually, medicine, it is embedded of these sex and gender differences. But it seems that we need a pandemic to get the world to recognize it. Now, but if this is the case, are sex and gender differences represented in the way we develop medical solutions for humankind? And the answer is no. A report from last year describing the number of people included within clinical trials for drugs approved by FDA between 2015 and 2017 show that just 43% of the patients included were women. And this number included also those indications reflecting disease or condition prevalent in women, like, like menopause. The same report pointed to the fact that only 5% of the patients included were black, 12% Asian, 78% majority white. You might agree with me that the clinical development in our days it is based on an average existent persona, a default human, which in fact historically happened to be predominantly white and male. Now, what does this mean for medicine? Well, the situation, it is not that good. In fact, a report from the General American Office in 2001 pointed to the fact that out of 10 drugs, Eight were withdrawn from the market because had major side effects on the female population mainly. We know that women are not really included in phase one and phase two of clinical trials or underrepresented. And this results in drugs which shows in this population often a moderate efficacy and major side effects. Even more striking it is what happened last year, 2019 a drug for HIV to prevent HIV has been approved, but only for men. And the reason is that not even one single woman was included in the clinical trial design. This is unacceptable. So how can we solve this? Well, the future is going to bring us precision medicine. Precision medicine it is the opposite of shallow medicine, what I have described to you before, to quote Eric Topol. And it is based on the use of proteomics, genomics, metabolomics, information about our socioeconomic status, about the race of the patient, the ethnicity of the patients, the sex and the gender of the patients, analyzed by artificial intelligence, which means each of us in this room will have a medical treatment tailored based on its own specific needs. But why is this not yet a reality? Well, the simple answer is that medicine, and mainly artificial intelligence, 
interpreting medicine. It is biased. And those biases are intrinsic, very often in a non-conscious way, in, not only in those who are developing the algorithm, but mainly in the data set which is used for this type of algorithms. It's a known problem that uh, in genomics, for example, big data sets reflect usually a 80 kilos, relatively wealthy white man. And as a doctor, I would love to have this type of patients all the time, but it does not reflect the overall population. So, this has, of course, implication for the way we do solutions. And I'll give you just an example. Recently, scientists were developing a diagnostic tool based on algorithm that was learning from data set. And what they've realized is that if the algorithm was trained mainly with data from female, the algorithm wasn't accurate enough in diagnosing chest pathology in men. And the other way around, pointing to the fact that you need both sexes to make a useful diagnostic algorithm. Now, this type of sex and gender differences are also embedded in brain and mental diseases. And this is where one of the highest unmet medical needs in medicine persists. I am a specialist in Alzheimer's disease. I can, tell, I can tell you that even in Alzheimer's, we have sex and gender differences. Women represent the majority of the patients. Women progress faster with the cognitive decline. Women have more brain atrophy, and they also represent the majority of the caregiver task force managing this condition for their beloved ones. What if we outsource the solution to algorithms? What if we bring type of precision medicine? And precision medicine relies on digital biomarkers, which means in this case, you can download an application on your mobile, and while sitting on the coach of your living room, you can take a test. And this test is going to assess your risk of having eventually Alzheimer's disease. It can tell you if your brain it is a normal one, working properly, if it has already symptoms of what is called mild cognitive impairment, the phase before the full Alzheimer's disease becomes manifested. But now, the interesting part comes. What if we ask the algorithm if the brain performing the test, it is a female brain or a male brain? And actually, the answer is that yes, the algorithm can distinguish it. So, based on certain type of classifier, it can tell whether the person taking the test it is a female or a male one. So we need to use this type of technology to analyze eventually how disease are affecting men and women in a different way, in what domains of our brain performance this has a meaning. And implement it in the way we do develop clinical trials to bring the medicine of the future with us. Now, the solution it is precision medicine, which has in fact the potential of transforming basically the treatment of brain and mental diseases. And uh, to do that will mean that we will reduce the cost of the healthcare system, we will have better drugs, they will act better, they will be tailored for the person sitting here, each of us, and this is at the right time, at the right moment, for the right medical condition. But for doing that, we need to do, in my opinion, four things mainly. The first one, it is to educate to this type of differences. Educate the scientific community, policymakers, regulators, drug developers, even the lay public and novel technology designers. We need to be aware that there is a risk of having algorithms which might be biased. And if this is the case, we have to mitigate this risk and avoid that it get implemented and perpetuated in the system. We need to activate always a strong ethical discussion for both clinical solutions, treatments, but also for novel technology design, such as the solution that we are designing, it is meant to benefit the overall population. And finally, we need to make 
artificial intelligence which is explainable. We need to know why artificial intelligence has taken that decision at that moment. And finally, we need to make it also reproducible, which means the result has to be reproduced in different parts of the world to be actually really true. So 2020 has been a very, very difficult year for science and medicine. And we have seen that we still have a lot of work to do. I think that out of this tragedy, we have the unique opportunity to transform healthcare system and medicine to make it sustainable, to make it representative of the characteristic of each of us when we do design drugs, when we do design novel technology, when we try to find social solutions for big problems as the pandemic. In my opinion, the precision medicine will become a reality once the world differences which divide each of us will be replaced by the world characteristic. Thank you.